to help get you started on your adventure in Paldea, here are 25 pro tips for early game that'll make your game a lot better. And if there are any tips I haven't mentioned in this video, please help someone out by writing them down below. Let's get into it. The intro of this game starts off very slow, so the moment you get the chance to press X on your controller, open it up and select the options. This will allow you to change the text speed to fast if you choose to do so. That way you can get through dialogue a little bit faster. Another cool option is to do the skip move learning. In this game, you can actually add on the Pokemon moves at any time you want. So you have this option to turn off when you are leveling a bunch of Pokemon and don't want that really annoying pop-up of saying, your Pokemon just learned to move. Would you like to replace a move on like literally six Pokemon in a row? This is really good when you are training up your Pokemon. But when you're starting your game, it's actually a very good option to leave it on because it'll help you a lot better to see the new moves for your Pokemon. When you have a full Pokemon party of six and you start to catch new Pokemon, the game will usually prompt you to decide if you want to add a Pokemon to your party or send it to the box. So by selecting this box option, it'll allow you to send Pokemon automatically to the PC. Autosave is an option in the game. When starting the game, it's really good to leave it on in case you run into any glitches or bugs because, you know, this game just came out and anything could happen out of, as of launch. So autosave is a great thing to have on. But... If you do happen to ever encounter something important like a shiny Pokemon, I highly suggest that you turn off autosave, manually save in front of the shiny while you can see it. That way, if the shiny runs away or disappears, you're really safe and the save has you covered. That's the only time I really suggest you turn off autosave and turn on save. If you ever find yourself lost in the game, press Y to activate the map. And if the map seems to look very confusing because it's in a weird rotating mode, you can always just go ahead and press in the right analog stick to turn off the rotating mode. Use the ZL and ZR button to zoom in and zoom out on the map. Zooming in is really good when you want to see the fine details of the shops in specific towns. While we're talking about the map, let's go over what each map icon represents. Red icons equal Pokemon centers you haven't been to. Red icons with wings equal Pokemon centers you've been to that you can fast travel to. The star-shaped ones represent Terra Raid Den types that are all over the map. You can see the typing depending on what color and symbol is on these stars. Anything with exclamation marks are quests that you have to do, aka the main storyline. And if you see any question marks with glowing around it, those are mass outbreaks. They are back in the game. And once you discover that Pokemon and add it to your Pokedex, it will no longer be a question mark, but rather the Pokemon then with a red glowing mark behind it because you already know what that Pokemon is. When you start the game, there's a really big temptation to run around and start exploring as this is the first open world Pokemon game. But if you want to access to terrestrialization, auto battling, and being able to ride your mount, your legendary Coridon and Maridon, I suggest you follow the story up until that point. At that point, you have freedom to do whatever you want in the game. Doing the main story will also unlock all three paths in the game, and you'll be able to explore the game as you freely please. While you're on the path, battle a few Pokemon, and maybe you can catch some for your team but don't get too distracted at the start if you do decide to catch pokemon in the early game area this is one of the best spots in the starting map i've made sure to mark it on the map over here so you can follow right from the starting area to this hill you don't need any special things to get there you can literally just walk and find a path up this hill and when you go up here you're gonna see some powerful pokemon like swablu who evolves into altaria so you're gonna have a dragon pokemon you got larvitar if you're playing pokemon scarlet so that is access to a pseudo legendary you get tyranitar and if you're playing pokemon violet instead of larvitars there will be baggins there that'll eventually become a solomance another dragon pokemon you'll also notice there is a little baby axew which is going to become a Haxorus, which is another dragon type pokemon and there's a few other notable pokemon in the areas like Rockruff, Rookidy, Shroomish. So you'll have a very powerful Pokemon team along with your starters if you do happen to go to this area. These Pokemon are around level 16 to 18. Speaking of Pokemon, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that we can catch all these dragon Pokemon. Now let's talk about the three paths that you unlock once you follow the main storyline. The Victory Road Path contains eight gym leaders. Now if you choose to defeat the gym leaders, you will be able to increase the level cap of your Pokemon. What this means is you can basically catch higher level Pokemon, they will start to obey you, your friends can trade you over Pokemon, they will start to obey you. 
Just remember, your starter can be whatever level it needs. It can be level 100 and it'll still obey you no matter what. Beating the gym leaders not only just allows your level cap to increase, but it gives you more items in the Pokemon shops. So every time you beat a gym leader, make sure to check on the Pokemon shops in the little Pokemon Center red things on your map. So you can see updated Pokeballs, updated potions, and more. Next, let's talk about the Titans. There are five Titans of the game. This is the Path of Legends that Arvin gives you. These Titans are, I would say, is very crucial to also do because the Path of Titans basically gives you access to the different ride features of Maridon or Coridon. So by doing these, you'll be able to access jumping, swimming, gliding, running, and finally climbing. It doesn't matter what order you choose to do these Titan battles for Path of Legends in. All you have to know is the further you get away from the starter area, the harder the Titan battle is going to be and the better the ability is going to be. There are five Team Star battles in the game and each one will unlock new TMs for you in your TM crafting menu. So doing these will expand the menu. But in order of importance, I really do suggest gym battles, doing Titans, and if you can fit Team Star battle in between, go ahead and do that. Once you complete each storyline, they will each have a final boss that you would have to beat. And then once you do all that, That'll lead to the final chapter of the game, but I'll let you discover that for yourself. Now that we've talked about all the basics in the game, let's talk about some big pro tips that you can do. So once you have access to the Maridon and Coridon mount, a huge pro tip I suggest that you all do is run around the map to every single Pokemon Center that you can find. They are again marked by the red visual on the map. All you have to do is go ahead, move your marker on it, select A, and travel right to that destination. The moment that you set your foot onto a Pokemon Center, it'll immediately become a flying point on your map. So just go around the map and unlock as many as you can to help you fast travel whenever you need. While you're also traveling to unlock these various locations and towns and Pokemon centers, go ahead and interact with random Terra Raidens. If you just click on them and tap them, you'll get LP, which is another currency in the game that can be used in shops and also your TMs. So you can really use money and LP to do the same thing in the game. LP specifically for TMs, but LP can also be used to buy items if you don't have enough money itself. So LP is everywhere in the game. It's becoming a big deal so i would suggest to go ahead and focus on grabbing as much lp as you can if you have a chance to fight the terror regions go ahead because they give great experience rewards as well experience candies you can use that to help level up your starter to become really powerful early on before even doing anything while you're also traveling around the map, you'll notice that there are a lot of sparkling things on the ground, red things on the ground, and yellow things on the ground. When you see these, pick them up. They could be rare expensive items. You can find nuggets. You can find potions. You can find higher level Pokeballs. Basically, the further you go out from the starting area and move towards high level Pokemon areas, the better items you will get. So traveling around is probably a really good idea picking these items up because you could have access to early Pokeballs before they even show up in the shop, which I mentioned before, you have to beat the gym leaders in order to get an expansion of Pokeballs and different items. You can also find large experience candies that you can use on your starters. That's pretty much how I was able to get Play Coco's third evolution at the start. I haven't done anything in my game and I'm already level 50 and that's how I'm already high level in my new game. Basically, if it sparkles or glows, just pick it up. You'll have a lot of items in your inventory that you can use at any time. Let's talk about terrestrialization a little bit more. The Terra Pokemon that you catch in the overworld are always going to be the same exact type. Example, if I catch a Pikachu, it's always going to have an electric Terra type. Now, there's going to be different spawns in the world. Sometimes you'll bump into these glowing overworld Terra Pokemon. These Terra Pokemon that are walking around are going to have different Terra type. The moment you interact with them, you'll see their Terra type right above their head. If you find a Pokemon that is a dual type, you have a chance of its Terra type being either or. So if you found a Dark Dragon, it could either be Dark or it could be Dragon when it Terrasalizes. If you want to randomly find a great Terra Pokemon, you can go into the Raid Dens. Each of these Raid Dens have different Pokemon with different Terra types and they're rotating all over the map. Sometimes you'll get a little unlucky and have a Terra Pokemon with the exact same type, but most of the time you'll get different ones. Also, you don't have to panic if you get a really good Pokemon in the game. Example, if you get a shiny Pokemon and you want to change its Terra type, later on in the game, you'll be able to do this via 50 Terra shards of a specific type. Now let's talk about Terra battling information. Remember, a Terra Pokemon still keeps the stab attack from their original typing and gains a third stab attack if they have that attack that matches the Terra type it evolves into. Let me give you an example. If I have an electric flying Pokemon and it becomes a water type, 
It's weak to anything that can beat water type, but it'll have a 1.5 multiplier for all electric attacks, 1.5 multiplier for all flying attacks, and if it happens to have a water attack while it's terrestrialized, it'll gain a two times multiplier on that attack. I hope that makes sense. Think of that when you are facing off against a Wild Terra Pokemon or a Terra Raid Den, or even if you want to transform yourself. The biggest thing is to know what you're going to be weak to and what the original typing attacks were. You can only Terra Pokemon once per fight. The cool thing about Terra Pokemon is if I Terrastalize my Pokemon and I bring them back into my party mid fight and send them out again, they are still Terrastalized. This is completely different than anything we've seen before with Mega Evolutions or Dynamax. They stay Terrastalized the whole fight until they get knocked out. Once the battle is over or you use up your Terrastalization, you then can recharge your Terrastalization by either going to a Pokemon Center and healing up your Pokemon or by going around and just touching a Terra Raid Den, you'll be able to bring back the Terra so you can do it again in battle. Don't make this mistake of not because if you're in a really hard fight, those Terra transformations really help. During your exploration, you might come across these little sticks in the ground that are completely different colors and bright and glowing. If you see one, just go ahead and pick it up. It has to do with a legendary Pokemon quest later. There's four new legendaries in this game, so just pick it up. It unlocks something for them, but we'll talk about that in another video. There are a lot of important shops in this game that I'm going to be talking about. Mostly, I'll use Mesa Goza as the example. You have the Artesian Bakery, Deli Cisco, and Shurikens. These are all going to have a lot of sandwich ingredients that you will need. Sandwiches are really great for giving you buffs and for getting certain Pokemon to spawn. A great example is I wanted a bunch of Bisharp to spawn, and I had a Dark Encounter power up. I did that, and I was able to get a bunch of Bisharp showing in the Bisharp spawning location. Trust me, sandwiches are very important for getting tasks done. I know we overlook this feature a lot when it comes to curry and other stuff, but sandwiches are big. And they give so many bonuses and they will help you later on in the end game. Because if you watched my last video, you know that shiny sandwiches are a big deal later on in the game. There is also a special shop in the game called Every Which Way that when you walk into, it's not noticeable on the map. It has a giant sandwich sign. There is going to be a guy in there that teaches you these random recipes. So go ahead and make sure to always come back to this guy as you progress through your game and talk to him also this shop has its own food with different buffs you don't have to always make your food you can just enter these shops and see if the food you buy matches up with the type of power up you want chance of supply is marked on the map and provides all items that boost stats and revival herb which is basically an early game max revive that you can find here a game changing shop is the deli bird present this is just marked by a deli bird holding a gift you can see this on your map in here you'll be able to find battle items and even evolution items for certain pokemon can be bought here as you progress through the game you can buy ev trading items early game under general goods to make your pokemon even more powerful and everstone is there to help with breeding and a suit that will help make pokemon very friendly towards you and you can get evolutions like chansey umbreon espeon and lucario because those pokemon require high friendship auto battles are super important they don't give you as much experience as actually going into battles but they are very important for dropping items that you're going to be used for making some tms some tms are going to be very important to helping your pokemon team succeed the best advice I can give you when it comes to auto battles is if you find a giant group of Pokemon via mass outbreaks, that's a great time to use auto battle because it's easy to hunt down the shiny Pokemon you want and you'll get a lot of level. Also, if you're just in the overworld and see a group of Pokemon just stacked up in a, in a corner, go ahead and set out your Pokemon and just go battle them. It's a great way to get experience. Auto battles are fantastic if you want to be a little more passive, relax, and just level up. I also noticed that Pokemon don't really evolve via auto battles. So if you do hit a required level for a Pokemon via auto battle, make sure to just enter a real battle once the experience bar is really close to the level and then just hit that level and your Pokemon should evolve. Another pro tip is don't be scared of jumping. You cannot die from falling in this game. Do not let the Pokemon Legends Arceus PTSD kick in. That game messed me up when I was jumping in this game because I thought I was just going to die every single time. If you don't have the swimming form for Coridon or Maridon, when you walk into water, you will drown and just scurry back to the last location you were before you walked into the water. 
When you catch 30 species of Pokemon and you go to the biology lab in the school and talk to Jacques, he will give you false swipe. This is really important when you want to get Pokemon to 1 HP and make it a lot easier to catch. A false swiper Pokemon is very important in your game and you can see which one you would like to put that TM on. But I really suggest you grab false swipe early from Jacques. This will help you catch your Pokemon and fill out the Pokedex fast. Speaking of filling out the Pokedex fast, it is probably a really important thing to do in this game because you'll be able to get a shiny charm at the end and you also get these really cool battle pass like level up rewards when you do register pokemon so it's a little motivating you'll get some special pokeballs like apricorn balls and beast ball if you do fill out your pokedex so make sure to try to catch every pokemon as you encounter them throughout the game the adventure guidebook if you need to go over any of the tips again from the game and not listening to my video you can open up the adventure guidebook in your menu and just read through all the little tips that it gives you as you unlock new features it'll remind you so if you're like i forgot something what was that again go ahead and just open up that adventure book should help you a lot multiplayer is a very big feature in this game and there are a lot of cool things that you can do in it but you're going to have to click on this video to find out what you can do in multiplayer i'll see you there